Don't just sit there like a corpse. Come on over and let me show you another cool Halloween mask here at the Mask Fan Attic where we look for scary and ugly and horrible things because I know that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, you like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Now, tonight's mask is one of the, uh, is a rendition, I should say, of one of the most famous classic monsters of all time, the mummy. Now, there have been so many mummy masks over the years, I could probably go a year just doing segments discussing a, a different mummy each week. No, I'm not going to do that, so don't be afraid. Uh, don't, don't feel threatened by that. That's not going to happen. The mummy I'm talking about tonight is this particular one. This is the Boris Karloff mummy, based on Boris's appearance in the 1932 original Universal Pictures classic, The Mummy. That's right. Uh, now, several versions have been done over the years, obviously. It's Boris Karloff, it's The Mummy. There have been multiple ones. I'm partial to this one, which was uh, sculpted by Mario Sciotto and released around 1999 uh, by Elusive Concepts. Now, how do I know 1999? There's a little a uh, little sort of plate here that says, and now I'm reading from the mummy, from the scroll of, of Elusive Concepts, trademark and copyright 1999, UCS, that would be Universal City Studios, licensed by MCA Universal Merchandising Inc. All right, okay, it should say all rights reserved, but it says all right reserved. Maybe it means it's all right to be reserved, I guess. I'm a little reserved too, um, um, too, sometimes, myself, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, reserved. Maybe it should say all fright reserved. But anyway, in any case, mummy case, this particular one I think has such a wonderful Karloffiness to it. It's to a word. Karloffiness? Yeah, it looks like Karloff. You see, it's Karloffiness. It's full of Karloffiness. The Karloffiness level is very high in this one. Now, it doesn't look exactly like any particular scene from the movie because. Um, Despite the way people tend to remember the Mummy movies, which is Mummy walking around, you know, scaring people to death, uh, in the original Mummy, in which the Mummy's name is Imhotep, this is Imhotep, you only see him when he's dead, or in his case, sleeping. So you see him with his eyes closed when he looks like this, then he comes to life and he walks, out, walks away off camera. So you don't really see much of the Mummy. There's only a couple of shots in there with any of a leg or an arm so you don't get much of a look at the mummy walking around he comes back and is uh, you know the villain of the movie uh, shortly but but appearing as a more human character a character with a very wrinkled and crusty face and and he, he calls himself uh, our death bay which by the way is an anagram of death by Ra Ra being an Egyptian god so that's kind of a he had a strange sense of humor, Imhotep. But anyway, through most of the movie, he's in his Ardeth Bay form, which is basically human, but looks like a man with a very bad skin condition, like, uh, you know, somebody who's either 3,000 years old or who has spent a lot of winters in Ohio, because this is how your skin gets in the wintertime in Ohio, because of the cold and the dryness, and that, yeah, everybody starts to look a bit like a mummy. But anyway, you don't see much of this in the film and you don't see him with his eyes open like this. Although you do see him with this expression and this creepy look in his eyes uh, later on when he's posing as uh, a normal person, relatively normal, named Ardeth Bay. So this kind of, kind of takes both of those uh, mummy visages into account. You have the dead mummy where he has this particular look and and bandages i think you can see the chest piece here has bandage, bandages on it and then uh the ardeth bay look with the creepy staring eyes giving you the uh the dirty look there giving you the 3700 year old stink eye that's what he's doing beautiful sculpture i love the way this uh i just love the way this this piece looks it's general creepy and and sad and powerful and angry all mixed together there's a lot of uh, a lot of character, a lot of personality, and does look ever so much like Boris Karloff. Uh, it's a bit big. People complained about that. This was part of a series of Elusive Concepts Universal Monster 
masks. There was a Frankenstein and a Bride of Frankenstein and a Dracula and uh, a Wolfman, etc. And they all tended to be a little too big. It's a common complaint with elusive concepts. I guess they just wanted to make real sure everybody could get the mask on. But you have to be careful when you wear them because you look like a giant bobblehead unless you have a very padded out uh, costume or unless you're a huge Herman Munster sized individual to start with. Anyway, uh, now in the movies, most of the mummy movies are about a different mummy named Karis. Now, Karis really doesn't have anything to do with Imhotep, even though he's, um, he's another universal classic. It's a different character. Imhotep only appeared in that first movie from 1932, and then he didn't show up again by that name until the Stephen Summers big comedy adventure mummy movie, uh, played, in which he was played by uh, Arnold Vosloo. And, and what, 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 what year was that? 1999? 96? 90? Well, whenever that, that big Stephen Summers mummy movie. Yeah, uh, Editing Zombie, put the date on here of when the Stephen Summers mummy movie about Imhotep came out. Yeah. Uh, in the intervening years between 1932 and... <coughs> uh, it wasn't the same uh, mummy. Uh, it wasn't Imhotep. It was old Karis for the most part. And other mummies showed up. Now, I've never been a big fan of these huge bibs on masks, unless the mask is um, non-human enough so that there's something really artistic going on there, like a sculpted, weird monster texture of one kind or another. So, when I got a chance to score an unpainted copy of that particular mummy, I cut that off. Now, this is the same exact thing, exact same piece, except I cut that off because I didn't want to devote the shelf space to just some strips. I didn't think that was all that interesting to look at. I thought the head was the crucial part. This one was uh, painted by me and then Laura, my long-suffering wife, added real hair, blended specially to match the highlights of my paint job on him. And I think he looks pretty great. I love this. Uh, love this mummy. And get the other one in the shot too here. Two mummies, no waiting. Yeah, there we are. So, uh, again, same exact piece. I should mention, perhaps, that the original, which was only in production for a couple of years, did not at any time have real hair added. It always just had the molded-in hair, uh, sculpted, molded, painted on like that. Didn't ever come with real hair. This is just something we wanted to do because, uh, like I said, I was lucky enough to score an unpainted one, and I thought, hey, I think I'd like it even better if it had real hair. So, great mummy. Uh, lots of likenesses of this character have been done over the years. Many of them, to me, have looked more like Abe Vigoda than Karloff, but, uh, but I think uh, Mario pretty well nailed it with his 1999 universal classic Boris Karloff Imhotep mummy. And now, while you go do something productive with your time, I'm going to go dig through the attic and see if I can find something to talk about next week.